from disappearing islands to strange anomalies and top secret US missions. These are seven deep water mysteries. Number seven, Bermeja Island, Yucatan Peninsula coast. Have you ever heard of an island simply disappearing without a trace? Well, it happens so often that there's actually a term for it, Phantom Islands, which were purported islands that were included on maps for a period of time, but were later found to not exist. They usually originate from the reports of early sailors exploring new regions and are commonly the result of navigational errors, mistaken observations, unverified misinformation, or deliberate fabrication. Some have remained on maps for centuries before being undiscovered. Bermeja Island, located in the northwest of the Yucatan Peninsula coast, is one such island. During the 16th and 17th centuries, the uninhabited island was a fixture on the maps of Spanish explorers. After that, the island seemed to appear and disappear on various maps until 1921, when it seemed to escape the notice of cartographers altogether. But interest in the elusive island resurfaced in 1997. That's when an accord between Mexico and the US divided a stretch of international waters, which included the area where Berhema was thought to be located. The Mexican government dispatched an expedition to find the island, because if it did exist, it would extend the country's maritime boundaries, and that would impact Mexico's rights to any oil deposits within those boundaries. The search came up empty, and the accord took effect. But the Mexican government did not give up. Several more extensive searches took place in 2009, but the island was nowhere to be found. It's rare to see a mystery have real-world impact like this, isn't it? Do you think the island ever existed? Speaking of phantom islands, the last recorded or, or misrecorded island case was the Terra Nova Islands off the coast of Antarctica in 1961. It wasn't until 1998 when an expedition to map the two tiny islands took place that researchers realized there was nothing there. But let's be reasonable here. I'm sure no strange conspiracies revolve around Antarctica, right? 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 Number 6. The South Atlantic Anomaly, Atlantic Ocean. This one might qualify as an outer space puzzle as much as a deep sea mystery. That's because scientists noted that satellites would black out whenever they passed over a certain area of the South Atlantic Ocean. The cause was traced to higher than normal levels of radiation caused by Earth's inner Van Allen belt. In layman terms, the effect is caused by the non-concentricity of Earth in its magnetic dipole, the SAA for short is the near-Earth region where Earth's magnetic field is weakest relative to the idealized Earth-centered dipole field. Even the International Space Station and the Hubble Telescope will shut down or curtail various operations when they pass through the SAA. While the cause of the anomaly seems to have been determined, I want to talk to you about how freaking crazy the US government is. Because in the late 1950s, Operation Argus took place. What is Operation Argus, you ask? It was a series of United States low-yield, high-atmosphere nuclear weapons tests secretly conducted over the South Atlantic Ocean, right around the South Atlantic Anomaly. The tests were meant to study the Christophilos effect, which suggested it was possible to defend against Soviet nuclear missiles by exploding a small number of nuclear bombs high over the South Pacific. This would create a disk of electrons over the United States that would fry the electronics of the Soviet warheads as they descended. What a great idea! Let's defend our country by exploding a bunch of nukes in the ocean, effectively creating a quarantine zone around the continental United States. You gotta wonder though, would it have worked? Yeah, it would have, barely. The tests proved that the effect did indeed occur, but dissipated too rapidly to be effective. What do you think? Did they do this to advance science? Number 5. The Devil Sea, Japan Coast. Anybody else absolutely tired of talking or hearing about the Bermuda Triangle? Well, too bad, because I'm going to have to introduce you to the Japanese version of it. Many claims of phenomena including unusual lights and bizarre objects, along with magnetic anomalies and strange disappearances have been reported over the centuries, right around here. In the early 1950s, a research vessel was dispatched by the Japanese government to investigate around the Devil's Sea. 
never to be seen again. In a 1995 book, The Bermuda Triangle Mystery Solved, Larry Cush contended that the Kayomaru No. 5 ship, along with its entire crew, was lost after, get this, an undersea volcano erupted and destroyed the vessel. How unlucky can you actually be? Back to the 50s we go. The initial disappearance prompted the New York Times to write an article with the title The Devil's Sea, where nine ships had been lost in perfect weather. Although there are many explanations for the disappearances of ships in the open sea, getting destroyed by an underwater volcano doesn't seem like the most plausible one. One point for the water aliens for this one. Number 4. The Mary Celeste, Azores Islands. This 19th century ship was originally known as Amazon when it was launched in Nova Scotia in 1861. After being purchased at a New York salvage yard, the ship was registered in the United States under the name Mary Celeste. On the morning of November 5, 1872, Mary Celeste left Pier 50 on the East River in New York City, captained by Benjamin Briggs, who was accompanied by his wife, young daughter, and seven crew members. The ship was loaded with tons of denatured alcohol headed to Genoa, Italy. On Wednesday, December 4th of the same year, Dei Gratia, a Canadian ship captained by David Moore, experienced something strange. A vessel was heading unsteadily towards the Dei Gratia. He sent two men in a rowboat to investigate after his signals were met with no reply. The Canadians found her in a disheveled but seaworthy condition under partial sail and with her lifeboat missing. The last entry in the log was dated 10 days earlier. Remember, the ship left New York City for Genoa on November 7th and was still amply provisioned when found. The cargo of denatured alcohol was intact and the captain's and crew's personal belongings were undisturbed. None of those who had been on board were ever seen or heard from again. There was a report in 1873 that two lifeboats containing a total of six bodies were found along with an American flag. While it was speculated that these may have been the remains of the Mary Celeste crew, there are no reports that the bodies were ever identified. Speculation about what happened to the crew ranges from being killed by pirates, to water spouts striking the ship, and elaborate schemes to defraud. Since then, the retelling of Mary Celeste's story has only grown more epic, more mysterious, and more outlandish. Number 3. Baltic Sea Anomaly, Gulf of Bothnia. Ocean X, a team of no-nonsense Swedish treasure hunters spearheaded by Peter Lindbergh and Dennis Aberg, set out on a diving mission in the northern Baltic Sea in June of 2011. Part of their operation included sonar imaging. After taking a closer look, the team suggested their sonar image showed an object with unusual features of seemingly non-natural origin, prompting speculation published in tabloid newspapers that the object was man-made or a sunken UFO. The group revisited the site the following year, intending to get a clearer image, but claimed mysterious electrical interference prevented them. Following a story published by the UK tabloid newspaper The Daily Mail in June 2012, a number of imaginative illustrations resembling underwater photos or high-resolution scans circulated, along with rumors that the object could be a UFO, a portal into another world, or an underwater Stonehenge. Naysayers were quick to judge the team, the tabloids, and the quality of the sonar image. Scientist Charles Paul of the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute told Popular Mechanics that the indistinct sonar image was more likely of a rock outcrop, sediment dropped from a fishing trawler, or even a school of fish. Since 2012, holy crap that was almost 10 years ago now, there have been no new expeditions or information regarding the strange structure. In 2019, Peter Lindbergh hinted at the possibility of a new expedition, but we will have to wait and see. Number 2. The North American Stonehenge, Lake Michigan Mark Hawley, a professor of underwater archaeology at Northwestern Michigan University, discovered this site in 2007. The archaeologist was hired to survey the floor of the lake by Traverse City using sonar to examine old boat wrecks. The team found boats, cars, trash, a pier from the Civil War era, but even more surprising was the underwater structure. 
The stones are organized at the floor of Lake Michigan and are claimed to be at least 10,000 years old because one stone in the outer circle, although still up for debate, appears to have a carving of a mastodon, an animal that went extinct over 10,000 years ago. Specialists shown pictures of the boulder say they need more evidence before confirming the markings are an ancient petroglyph. Unfortunately, no one has bothered to revisit the site and examine these damn stones up close. I don't know why, but anybody else up for a little diving mission? Number 1. The Deep Sea – Earth 75% of Earth's surface is below the great oceans. Of that, Humanity has managed to map and explore an estimated 5%. What lurks below? Do the maths, and in terms of total volume, 99% of Earth's biosphere is essentially unknown. It's astounding that, topographically speaking, we know more about the moon than our own planet. I'm always reminded of James Cameron and his submarine, but in reality, we should really do more to learn about the unexplored deep below, don't you think? Check out the featured comment below, subscribe for more World on Earth, and I'll see you in the next video.